fourth of the season, 30th win of your career. That's what I'm told. You must have many thoughts racing through your mind right now. What are your initial thoughts for all of us here waiting for you? Oh. Um, that was a wild one, wasn't it? <laughs> that was an absolute wild one. Um, you know, at the start, I'll go through it in sort of chronological order, I guess. At the start, um, I could see uh, running. I was running third. Actually, I was running fourth at one point, and I got past Colmey on a restart and running back in third. And I could see that Scott was really just kind of playing with Will. He could make some really good gains just in one lap, and he was obviously just kind of holding. But he couldn't get enough to get past. But he was just he was biding his time. Um, and then we started to catch traffic. I don't know who it was, but <clears throat> my guys we caught the traffic through turn seven. And my guys just uh, they called, they called me in the pitch straight away. So um, we got back out, and I understand from Scott they got held up pretty badly by the traffic. So um, the, regardless of if there had been a yellow or not, I would have probably been ahead of Scott and Will because of the call my guys made on the stand. So that was a, obviously a good call. But I got ahead of those guys, um, and they got shuffled further back because the yellow then came out. We got somewhat held up, um, and I made the wrong choice. Um, on one of those restarts there, and got, Justin got past, and, um, and then Will got past as well. And um, then obviously the, the, the bit I'm sure you're all interested in was the, the, the contact with Will. Um, on the restart, I got a good run down the back straight, and I was on Will's gearbox, and I was actually having to just lift a little bit to avoid running into the back of him. And he pulled out, um, and I went down the inside, and he and I started to break where I thought this is as late as I can possibly go in here and Will went a bit deeper I thought well fair play. The result of that was that he missed the, the apex of the corner and he ran wide so <clears throat> I was I think in more control of my car so I went down the inside there and got about a third of the way alongside and as I had done before that day and, and as I did a lot subsequently both on the inside and outside we started to run around the corner side by side. Um, Will started to, to crowd me there um, and unfortunately at that point as he was crowding the wall comes out um, and so I couldn't go any further to the right because there's a wall there and Will was crowding me in so I was trying to get out of it and I couldn't um, and that, I'd say that is my uh, that was my part in the accident I couldn't get out of it quickly enough to avoid hitting him but I think Will has equal equal blame in that in the fact that he came down across like I, like I wasn't there um, when it was clear that we could run through that corner side by side and, and a lot of people including myself did so all day um, so from that point, you know, I, I don't, I don't want the incident to happen. I don't like to race like that. I don't like to to, to have contact, especially with the guy you're racing. You know, with it, it's closely with as well and I race together. Um, and then what happened? Um, we managed. There's some subsequent restarts. The hardest part of the day was actually getting lined up for the restarts because of the marbles in turn ten and eleven. Um, I managed to make some passes on the restarts and got up to second behind, behind Graham. And Graham couldn't go to the left through turn 10 because of marbles, and I couldn't go through turn 11 on his outside, so we couldn't actually form up for a double wide restart. I tried it and I almost stuck the thing in the fence. So that was, that was a bit interesting. Um, we eventually managed to get it done, <clears throat> managed to pass Graham on the restart. Um, Another yellow, another yellow. We had some pretty good close side by side racing. Him and I through turn one, down the front straight through turn one, and then I saw Scott coming, and I thought Scott was the, the car to be all all weekend. Um, so I saw him coming, and I thought mm, this is going to be tough, and uh, was able to hold Scott off and, and actually pull away a bit um, and control the pace. The car really came to life those last couple of laps once we got rid of the the marbles from the from all the restarts. So um, ah, great, to, great to win here in Toronto. Well, we'll open it up to members of the press and just state your media and, na and name. Mr. Dean McNulty, go ahead from the yeah, side. Dean McNulty from Toronto Sun. Uh, Dario, uh, Will's exact quote was, I always race him clean and he always races me dirty. Uh, <laughs> I, think that's, uh, I think that's a slight exaggeration. We've had contact once. Which was today, and as I've said, I mean, you, you, I watched on TV. I, I obviously was involved in it from the car. I subsequently watched it on TV, and um, I think it's a racing incident at best. Um, I don't think I'm known throughout the paddock as a driver who races people dirty. Um, you guys can check up on that. I don't think I am. 
and um, we had a we had a, a situation in St Pete this year in turn two when I drove around his outside in in turn one and passed him in turn two. And there was not there was nothing dirty about it. It was an aggressive move, but there was absolutely nothing dirty. There was no contact. Um, so I'm not I'm not really sure what Will was. Uh, is talking about in that. I will say, in his defence, had that happened to me today, I would have been steamed when I got out of the car too, particularly if I had crashed later in the race. I don't know how he ended up in the tyres there, but I would have been steamed too. And I, I understand his anger, but hopefully when he watches the the replay on television, he'll realise it, it was a racing incident. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, sixth win in Canada. Uh, Jeff Gordon, Jeff Gordon. Unbelievable record. Is there anything you can attribute that to? I was telling the guys on the TV, I won my first poll here back in 1997. I'm pretty sure how old James Hinchcliffe was in 1997. <laughs> um, actually, he was 11. I saw his thing the other day. So, um, I don't know what it is. I love, from, from the first time I came here, I loved being in Canada. Um, and I think some of that, whether it was Toronto, Vancouver, or, or going up to Montreal, I think a lot of that had to do with Greg because I spent time with him and his family. I really got to to, to know, you know the Canadian people and just you know, he, as you all know, he was my best friend and we uh, and and I think that's some of the reason I just I love coming to Canada and I do some of my best work here. But I, you know, whenever I whenever I come up here, I I always I always think of him and uh, and, and you know now it puts a smile on my face.